All right, obviously, I believe we've announced two trades, even though they were announced on Twitter about three hours ago. Um, obviously, a continuation of what we started the other day in terms of taking uh, players that, quite frankly, we never envisioned needing to move on from when we acquired them. But given the type of season we've had, it makes uh, it certainly makes sense for us to improve our future at the cost of the uh, current 23 club. Uh, so definitely uh, mixed feelings and, and some disappointment involved in trading guys like Lance and Kendall and Joe. Uh, however, great deal of excitement certainly down at our end of the building about uh, the prospects we received in exchange. Um, starting with, we'll start with the, the Houston trade with catcher Corey Lee, uh, very strong uh, catch and throw type, good leader on the field, high energy. Uh, I believe it was in the release, because uh, that's how good Bob Beckball is, uh, that he was teammates and he actually was roommates with Andrew Vaughn. Uh, Andrew Vaughn and I had a conversation earlier today uh, about Corey and about Corey's potential fit and makeup, and uh, Andrew had nothing but very positive things to say. And we're excited to add uh, another potential uh, future piece behind the plate to the organization. Uh, with the Dodgers, uh, we acquired two arms and, and Trace Thompson, starting with uh, Mistrini. We view him as having a, a very solid four-pitch mix, uh, command of all four with significant upside and the ability to uh, uh, continue his advancement towards, towards Chicago here. Uh, Leisure is a, another power arm, fastball slider combination. Uh, obviously has some gaudy strikeout numbers in double A. Uh, he will be joining the Charlotte Knights in the coming days, so we're, we're promoting him right off the bat. And uh, look forward to following both those pitchers' development here over the next next several months and, and into 2024. Uh, Trace, uh, you know, obviously we all know Trace. Those of you who've been around for a while, been here for his previous stint. Uh, between the lines, he provides us with some versatility, the ability to play all three outfield positions, obviously complement the left-handed hitters we have in the corners and to back up uh, uh, back up Luis in center field. Uh, as importantly, uh, Trace is a class individual. Class is a great teammate. He is uh, a, a very strong team guy and the type of guy we want in here as part of his culture, uh, certainly for the rest of the year and, and potentially going forward as well. So with that, questions. Rick, the two guys that you traded on Wednesday night, you talked about how they were pending free agents and, and what that meant for, for this deal. The three guys you traded today had more control or the options of more control. The potential for more control. Yeah, does that does it speak to uh, what your guys' plans are for next season that you moved them today? I think it speaks more towards uh, projecting out how each of those guys would potentially fit going forward and being uh, more compelled to add the future pieces that we were able to get at this time. Obviously, all these things, the, the, the guys who are impending free agents, I think from a logical standpoint, by the end, you should get what you can get if you're not going to compete this year. Uh, the guys with future control, it all comes down to a balancing of the return versus the value of that player in the organization for next year. Uh, in each of the deals today, we were very pleased what we were able to bring back. But, uh, but there was no urgency necessarily to move any of the three players. How close do you think Corey is to the Well, he'll be in Charlotte, so how far is that? Timetable. Timetable. Oh, geez, <laughs> the harder question. Yeah. I'd say about 1,200 miles or something. Um, he's actually, I should say, back, going back on Trace as well, both Trace and, coincidentally, Corey are recovering from oblique injuries. Uh, Trace is on a rehab assignment, he'll join Charlotte, and he needs to finish the 60-day stint for the 60-day IL, which will toll, I believe, the middle of next week, Wednesday, or something like that. So he, he's close to returning. Uh, Corey was scheduled to DH tonight as a start of the rehab for him. Uh, so let's get him healthy, get him back uh, playing regularly initially on a rehab, and then potentially in Charlotte or potentially in Chicago uh, to get him a chance uh, get to know this staff and for our, our coaches to get to know him. He obviously had some time in the past in the big leagues. He's still young, still developing, but there's a very real possibility we'll see him at some point this year and then figure out in the offseason how he fits going forward. But he's, he's on the cusp. Everyone what you is, acquired is double A or higher is 
is near readiness uh, something that you're... That's nice. You're, I mean, you always would prefer... Near readiness is has a great deal of appeal when you're evaluating the value of a trade. Uh, certainly, there's slightly less risk because there's slightly less projection going forward. Uh, we did have conversations with, uh, in all three of the deals, about the, for all three of the, excuse me, the cluster of players that we moved in all three deals, uh, we did have some A-ball targets involved that we discussed with teams, but when you, again, when you balance out the returns, uh, having guys a little closer to the majors increases the value if the ceilings are similar. What is kind of, if, I don't know if it's again too early because you're still working, but yes, what is, is kind of your message to the fans right now? After yeah, we're, right now we're working to continue to do what we've done over the last few days and then, you know, come August 1st. Yeah, first of all, I've been talking too much. I don't know if I need to keep sending messages, but we're going to keep doing the deals if, we, if they present themselves over the next few days and discuss them when they arise. Well, I think it's not message. I mean, I think it's it's more just kind of, I guess, the focus of the team, or, or is that still too early? I mean, that's, again, you're talking more like rallying cries and marketing slogans and crap like that. I'm not really focused on that right now. Right now, we got work to do in terms of continuing to execute deals like the ones we had. And, you know, come August, September, and certainly October, that's the time to sort of reflect on the season and direction and what's next. Perhaps it's cool. What did Lance, uh, Joe, and uh, Kendall, like you when they were here? What they provide us when they were here? Uh, obviously, a good amount of stability. You know, Kendall was uh, part of the mix for 7th, 8th, and ninth, and Joe, when we got him out there, was, was a pretty dominant back-end reliever and has a great deal of value. Obviously, given his experience in the postseason, you can see why... He's an attractive target, a team that knows him well. Uh, and Lance was a, a stalwart in the rotation. Obviously, he had some struggles this year, but you know, I'm pretty sure he was third place for the Cy Young on a division winner, and that's pretty damn impressive and pretty damn important. Perhaps coincidental, but did you intend to acquire multiple catchers and improve your catching um, in the organization? It's an area of need. I mean, arms and catching were certainly on the, the towards the top of the priority list based upon the system and what we have under control going forward. Uh, by no means did we sit down a month ago and say, let's get two catchers or let's get three catchers or make sure we get five arms or whatever it is. Uh, but there were areas of need and, and creating depth and competition and alternatives is going to serve as well. It's a significant chunk of, I guess, the leadership structure for the fishing staff that's probably going out in the last couple of days. Is that something that you guys are looking to, I guess, reclaim or reestablish over Monster. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be a real interesting clubhouse over the next couple of months in a good way. I think there's going to be the, the room uh, for some of these young guys to sort of grow and blossom and then take some of the leadership rank. You know, as I mentioned, coincidentally, I talked to Andrew Vaughn about his former teammate today, but I think that's a player who you're going to start seeing in a larger leadership role in that room. And, and there's certainly others on the on the pitching staff that can seize that mantle, too, now that some of the veterans are are obviously going to be elsewhere. You said Wednesday night that you, you guys weren't done by any stretch. Yeah. Two trades later, do you see more happening over the few, Again, next few days? Impossible for me to prognosticate. Uh, we still have players of interest to other clubs, and we're still having talks. But I don't even know what day it is, but it seems like there's a few days left till the deadline until we get to Tuesday. Uh, so we're going to continue talking, and if there's something that makes sense, we'll, we'll pull the trigger. Uh, see you DC on the streaming. Uh, <laughs> We think he's got a chance to be a real solid. I, I hate putting this guy's mid rotation, this guy's front end, this guy's back end because you let like the guy grow. He's a which is, so thanks, thanks for asking. Uh, he, uh, we think he's got a really good chance of being a real solid mid rotation type starter with the potential of a ceiling of more. Like we're we're really excited about this guy. This is a real solid, you know, four pitch mix, athletic kid with a good delivery and. A, Command of four different pitches. I mean, it, it's we're excited again. This is this is a good game, as is leisure. You mentioned Trace and the culture, like yeah. what he can pro provide. Is that something you're generally looking for with a lot of these moves, not just Trace? Uh, I mean, in these moves, uh, character always matters. Makeup, fight, energy, desire, how you treat each other, teammates. You know how you accept difference within the different cultures that you deal with in the clubhouse matters. Um, so it's always part of our analysis. Again, it's part of the reason I called Andrew about a guy he knew better than I did, or even better than our scouts did. Um, so yes, it matters. At this deadline, we're trying to acquire as much as we can for the organization that fits with that. But for that room right here, you know, 
frankly, when you're moving veteran guys out and we're calling up young guys to fill the spot, the deals are as much about building this for the future as they are doing something in that room right now. So I don't want to say like adjusting our culture in that room today is right. a goal, but for the long term, yeah, yeah. And absolutely. And Trace is the kind of like, Trace helps. Like Trace helps with that. Yeah, absolutely, he's a pro, and it was, it was good to reconnect with him when I called him a couple hours ago.